Okay, so we're now in our next video in College Algebra. In this video, we're going to talk about now, formally, the radicals. So we have somehow introduced this in our video in Fractional Exponents, wherein if you have a, an exponent which is in a form of a fraction, we can convert that into a radical and then solve it, because we cannot solve it solely when it is in a form of a fraction, a fractional exponent. So we formally state it here. So this is a radical. Okay, the name of this kind of number where you can see this kind of sign, we will in, we will be defining this in a while, we call this a radical. This is read as the nth root of b, okay, the nth root of b, where n and b are integers. Strictly, n is a positive integer, okay, n must be a positive integer, it's an element of the positive integer. We call this n as our index, the index of our radical, or also it can be read as the order of our radical, okay, the order of our radical. That's our n. B, on the other hand, which is inside the radical sign, we call this the radical sign, by the way. B is what we call the radicand. Okay, it's what we call the radicand. And this symbol, this sign here, is what we call the radical sign. Okay? So we're going to give you some examples of these radicals that we are talking about. And we're going to talk about in a couple of videos, future videos. Um, let's start with the very basic of all of them. So we have here, um, first is a radical of the second order, okay? So notice that we have here, there's no index. Take note, we don't need to write an index to in the, in, whenever we talk about square roots. We call this a square root, okay? A second order radical or a square root. So we read this as a square root of b. And it doesn't need to have a 2 because when it doesn't have a 2, it's automatically known that uh, it doesn't have any number, rather. When there's there's a blank there in the index, just like this, it's automatically 2. Okay, so we can answer these things here, like what is the square root of 4 to 9, square root of 121, square root of 36. So it's like, it's like asking the question, what number, in such a way that if you're going to square that number, will result to 49. It will result to... 49. So, and also what number will, in, the, in such a way, if you're going to square that or multiply that by itself, it's going to give us 121. And what number, in such a way that if you're going to square that, it's going to give you 36. So maybe you can think about that for seconds. Okay, so maybe you have thought in here in, in 49, uh, what number will we multiply or square or multiply by itself will give us 49. So try to think of 7. 7 times 7, or simply 7 squared, will give us 49. This can also be written as 7 squared, or simply without the parenthesis, 7 squared. But take note, it's not limited to positive integers. Okay, It's not limited to positive integers. Um, this is not really an equal sign. Um, let's delete all of this. Let's put it here. We should not use the word equal sign here. So um, take note, 7 squared is equal to 49. Okay? But it's not only going to be 7 squared. Um, notice that if we're going to square negative 7, negative 7, it's still going to give us positive 49 because negative 7 squared is actually negative 7 times negative 7. Okay? So... Squaring or multiplying negative 7 by itself is going to give us still positive 49. So the answer here actually is going to be positive and negative 7. But we can have the absolute um, positive of the answer, which is kind of kind of the one which is um, understood usually, but we tend to forget the negative answer. Don't forget that there's a negative answer. So if you want the absolute positive, so it it will going it's going to be positive seven. Seldom some books will say that if you want a negative answer out of this square root, you must indicate a negative sign outside. Okay, some books will will suggest that. Okay, so for the forty nine, what what is the answer? You will notice that eleven squared is equal to, or rather, for one twenty one. 11 squared is going to give us 121. So it's going to be positive and negative 11. Again, if you want the absolute, positive only. So 11 will do. For the square root of 36, we will we can see that 6 squared is equal to 36. Okay, and the answer is positive and negative 6. 
or if you want a po absolute positive, it's going to be just positive 6. Okay, so those are the examples for the second order of radicals or the square roots. Let's move on to the next one. We will be talking about now the third order or the cube roots. We read this as the cube root of something. Um, let's move this and doesn't just show the fourth root. It's just okay. So here we go. So we read this as the cube root of B. So the cube root of B. Now this time the index is emphasized that there's a 3 there. So what number? In such a way that if we're going to multiply that by itself three times, it's going to give us 125, it's going to give us 8, it's going to give us 216. So maybe I can give you some time to think about that. Okay, so what are the answers? Um, you will eventually see that for number three, since there is a negative sign there, so um, try to imagine multiplying three numbers um, in any combination of numbers. Actually, any combination of these two, okay, um, will give will give you positive because if all of them, or rather, combination of three of them, okay, it's either going to be all of, all three of them are positive. Or all three of them will be negative because they're the same number, right? Cubing them is, you know, we need to multiply the same number. So if they're both, if all of three of them are positive, cubing it will be positive. Okay, let's try to imagine um, simply two times two times two. Um, they're all positive. That's going to give us positive eight. But notice if it's going to be negative. Negative times negative times negative times negative. So negative times negative is going to give us positive. Positive times another negative will give us negative. So therefore, our answer, whenever we have a, a cube root, which is a negative, we, which has a, a negative radicand, meaning we will have a negative answer out of it. Okay, so negative 125, what's the answer for that? Okay, so the answer there is actually negative 5. So what is negative 5 cubed? So negative 5 cubed is actually, that's the answer negative 125. You can try it out yourself. Um, negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is going to give us um, wait. negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 25 times negative 5 is going to give us one negative 125. So that's correct. For number three, I think you can see it here in my examples. I haven't noticed that. So the answer is positive two, strictly positive two. There's no negative two. Because if we're going to have negative two qubit, the answer is negative eight. So for number three, the cube root of two one six, what number is that? So by by trying your best, you will see that the answer is six. So six times six times six. Six times six is thirty-six. Thirty-six times six is going to give us um one. 8, 6 times 6 is 36. So 1, this becomes 2, this becomes 1, this becomes 6. So that's that's correct. Okay, so that's for the third order. Our last example will be about the fourth order. Okay, so the fourth order is simply the fourth root of B. So what number will be multiplied by itself four times will result to these numbers here. So we have um, what's the fourth root of 256, the fourth root of 625, the fourth root of 81. Okay, um, I, I will give you time to answer that. Okay, so what's the answer? By practice, you will see um, that, by the way, before that, um, you will notice that the fourth root will behave just like the, the square root when it comes to the signs. Okay, when it comes to the signs. So you can imagine, like, for example, um, multiplying all, all positive integers by itself will still be positive. So there's no question with that. Um, the complication will start when, when we have negative answers. So let's try. You know, multiplying this all positive, if, if they are all positive, there's no question, it, sh it must be positive. But if it is negative, what will be the answer? So let's try. Um, negative times negative is going to give us positive, right? Or maybe we can multiply this also. Negative times negative is also positive. And well, voila, we can see positive times positive, of course, no doubt is positive. So therefore, getting the fourth root of any radicand will lead us to to two answers, just like in the square root, the, the behavior of the square roots, wherein we will try to notice the negative, the negative sign also, the negative counterpart. Um, generally, you will see some theorem or some concept that all um, even numbered or even um, 
even integers in the index will result to positive and negative signs. And for odd, it will strictly be whatever it is in the sign of the radicand. Okay, so let's start here, by the way. So what number multiplied by, by itself four times will give us 256? So you will know that by practice, you will see that the answer is 4. Why is that? So let's try 4 times 4 times 4. Sorry. Times 4 times 4. Um, 4 times 4 is 16. Uh, 4 times 4 is 16. What is 16 times 16? Let's do some, let's apply some Vedic maths here. Okay, if you if you don't know about Vedic maths, maybe you can check my, my page about that. So 6 plus 6 is 12, and this becomes 36. So we have 2, 5, 6. So indeed, 16 times 16 is 2, 5, 6, and 16 times 16 came from 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, so therefore, the answer is correct. And again, if we're going to multiply negative negative force, notice this becomes positive 16 and positive 16. So the answer is positive and negative 4. Again, if you want the absolute positive, so it's going to be just 4. If you want the absolute positive. Now, for number 2, for the second item, so we have the fourth root of 625. Um, by thorough practice, you will see that the answer is 5. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 5 is 25, 25 times 25, um, 5 times 25 over here, this becomes 4, this becomes 10 plus 10, that's 20, and then we have 25, so therefore the answer is um, 6, 25, which is the same there, so the answer is 5, um, specifically um, positive, negative 5, or if you want the absolute positive, just 5. And then we have the last item, Fourth root of 81, so you will know that it's 3, positive and negative 3. So we have um, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. Um, 3 times 3 is 9. We now, we now, we know rather, we know that 9 times 9 is going to give us 81. So no doubt about the 3. Okay, uh, if you want the absolute positive, it's just going to be 3. Okay, so that's it for this video about the introduction of radicals on how to check or how to solve um, the the fourth root, the nth root of radicals. Actually, we just we just um, we just stopped in the fourth root. So, anyways, at least it, it shows you um, some introduction for your radicals. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you would like and subscribe, and um, see you in the next video. Thank you.